Structural engineers are the analytical masterminds behind everyday structures like high-rises, bridges and houses. But what do structural engineers actually spend their days doing? Is it all glorious building design or is it mainly meetings and emails? Do contractors actually read engineering plans or do they treat them as a rough guide? Are architects and engineers worst nightmare or are they happy to change their layouts to help make the structural design work? Well, these are just some of the questions I'm going to be answering in today's video because today I'm going to be exposing the reality of 12 of the most common expectations around being a structural engineer. Also, if you're new here, my name is Ben and I'm a structural engineer working and living on the east coast of Australia. And if you find value in this video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing. All right, so the first expectation I have for you is I'll be working on cutting edge designs like iconic bridges and skyscrapers. In reality, guys, working on an iconic bridge or building may come along once in your career if you're really lucky. Think about this. How many times in the last 40 years in the area that you live or want to work in has there been a truly iconic bridge or building built? I know for me there's at least one building which is the Q1 and it's the tallest building in Australia, but besides this, I don't think there's anything else that I would claim as world class and truly iconic. Although maybe you thought about your situation and in your city, you could think of at least five different iconic projects. Well now, think about this. What are the odds that you're working at the right company at just the right time and was actually chosen to be a part of the team that got to work on that project. Look, I'm not saying it's impossible, but as you can see, it's pretty unlikely that these sorts of projects will take up much of your career. The types of projects that most structural engineers will actually spend their time doing are things like residential houses, extensions and renovations, industrial concrete and steel framed warehouses, and also uniconic low and high rise buildings. For me personally, I actually enjoy working on everyday structures and don't really feel like I'm missing out by not working on the next iconic building because a lot of the design tasks I would do anyway would be much the same. I'll use advanced 3D modeling and analysis tools daily. Now this one is pretty true. Most days you will be using some sort of advanced analysis software like Space Gas or Rain Concept to assist with your designs. You will also get to use 3D models created in programs like Revit to visualize different structures. Now the only reason I said this one is pretty much true is because some days you won't need to touch these programs at all. On these off days, you'll be out at site inspections, in meetings with other consultants or with clients, or even just busy replying to emails or reviewing drawings. I'll be on site in a high visibility vest, managing a big team of workers. As a structural design engineer, you will occasionally go to site in a high visibility vest, but you're not gonna be managing a big team of workers there. That will be the site engineer's responsibility. When you go to site as a structural design engineer, you go to inspect that the contractor is building things in the same way that you have detailed them. So this means that you'll be walking around with a bunch of design drawings and be checking that things match up. For example, this could be things like the size, spacing and number of steel reinforcing bars in a concrete column or it could also be that a steel frame has been erected using the same member sizes and connections you have documented. Structural engineering offers a healthy work-life balance. Now, this is a bit of a tough one because working conditions for structural engineers can be different in other parts of the world, so I'm gonna talk about my experience in Australia specifically. So yeah, for the most part, I think structural engineering can offer a healthy work-life balance if you want it to. Now, don't get me wrong, there definitely are times that are busier than others, and during those times, you might be expected to put in some extra hours to meet client deadlines, but for the most part, if you work consistently throughout the day and you work for a company that has realistic expectations, your nights and weekends will be all yours. Every project will be unique and challenging. Yeah, every project is definitely unique and has its own challenges, but in saying that, a lot of structural design has been standardized and a lot of the same details do get reused over and over. I think that having a standardized way of doing things does actually make the design and construction process a lot easier, but in doing so, so it does take away a bit of the creativity. For me personally, I actually really like that there's lots of typical ways that things get connected because when you do come across a funky connection, you can spend a lot of time just focusing in just on that one because you know that all the other connections on the project will probably be covered by the typical connections. But outside of this sort of thing though, things are pretty specific for each project. So while some of the design methods may feel pretty similar on each project, you will end up always producing a slightly different end product. I'll collaborate smoothly with architects and bounce creative ideas back and forth. First things first, for anyone that doesn't understand the difference in roles here, the architect is responsible for things like the look and the layout of the structure, and the structural engineer is responsible for providing adequate connection details, reinforcement layouts, and also member sizes that achieve the 
architectural vision. As most architects only really have a base understanding of engineering principles, it's really up to the structural engineer to assess the structural viability of what they're proposing, and in doing so, advise them of ways to make their vision possible. And often this advisement comes in the form of meetings and requests through email. Most of the time, if you can give solid reasoning as to why something needs to change, or you can propose some alternative options, getting things amended to something that works for you structurally isn't too difficult. Civil engineering is a highly respected field, so I'll be well compensated from the start. Sadly, compensation for civil engineers is generally much lower compared to other engineering majors. In the early years, people in software or mechanical engineering roles can be making upwards of 30 to 40% more than civil engineers. For the civil engineering related fields, compensation only really improves with experience, but it can still take years before seeing significant and pay increases. Now, just so I'm clear, I'm not saying that civil engineers make bad money because they definitely don't. They do still typically earn more than the average wage, but just in comparison to other engineering majors, it's not as good. Anyway, across the civil engineering related disciplines, people who work on site in some sort of construction management type role or anyone who works in mining is usually among the highest paid. So if money is something that you wanna prioritize early in your career and you don't wanna be out on site or working in the mines, I don't think civil engineering will be for you. In civil engineering, those bigger salaries in the city only really come later on. So if you can be patient and build up your skills over time, you still can end up earning hundreds of thousands of dollars per year, both as an employee and as a business owner working in civil engineering. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video, but I quickly want to take a moment and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. For those of you that haven't heard of Skillshare, it's the largest online learning community for creatives. On Skillshare, there are thousands of classes led by industry experts across things like design, marketing, productivity, and more. Each class consists of a pre-recorded series of bite-sized lessons that you can complete at your own pace. Most classes take a learn-by-doing approach to teaching where members are encouraged to create a project while taking the class, and often at the end of the class, people share their project with the community and get feedback. As engineers, I think the classes on things like time management, leadership, excel, and productivity are really well suited. In fact, just last week I started a new class on Microsoft Excel to learn some more advanced functions, and already I've started incorporating some of the tricks I've learned into one of my design spreadsheets. Anyways, if you're interested in giving Skillshare a go, be sure to check them out using my link in the description, as the first 500 people to use my link will receive a one month free trial where you'll get full access to all of their classes. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to it. Any issues with my design will be picked up early through design checks, software checks, and reviews. Unfortunately guys, we do not live in a perfect world and things can be modeled wrong in the software, things can be missed in the review, and things can just be built incorrectly on site. A huge responsibility we carry as structural engineers is that our designs will be able to stand the test of time, so being as thorough as possible in your designing and your reviewing of drawings is really, really important. Also, one thing you'll start to notice once you get a bit more experience is that even even during a design review, your reviewer won't be going around redoing and checking every little element. So don't think that it's their job to pick up on anything that could possibly be wrong. Real projects aren't like assignments where there's going to be someone going around and marking every little thing because that just doesn't happen. For actual projects, critical elements are being checked based off quick calculations and off experience, and other things are going to be assumed to be appropriately designed. So if you're unsure about something while you're actually designing it, be sure to ask other engineers your questions because you want to be confident that everything on the drawing actually works. I'll learn everything I need on the job through my seniors teaching me. Okay, now this one's definitely a false expectation. For sure, your seniors will help and guide you through some stuff, but you've got to remember that they've got their own work to do and projects to complete, so they can't just walk you through everything. As a young engineer especially, you will need to spend a lot of time reading textbooks and also going back over the stuff you've forgotten from university. Aside from this, you'll also need to spend extra time learning how to use different different design programs through watching videos and reading the manual, and you'll also need to spend extra time reading codes and standards so you know how to apply them to your design. Contractors will carefully follow all my design drawings and specifications. Some contractors are definitely better at this than others, but at the end of the day, if they've decided to do something different and it still works structurally, then it's not a big deal. Ideally, the contractor does follow your drawings exactly because that makes your job a lot easier, but often they've had to change things for reasons outside of 
their control like geometry constraints or material constraints. I'll use the advanced structural theories I studied at university. Day to day you won't directly be using these theories. Most of these really advanced theories has been programmed into structural analysis design programs and the role of a structural engineer is to know how to use these programs and apply it to real life structures. In saying this though, a lot of the more intermediate and basic theory you will still apply yourself when doing hand calculations, but this will only be for simple and straightforward designs. Once I learn design software, I'll be set for my career. Okay, so one thing you'll definitely come to learn is that a lot of structural engineering is actually done outside of design programs. For me, one of the more fun parts about being a structural engineer is figuring out how I'm going to lay out all the members to get the design to work, and none of that is done in a design program. During that stage, I'm only sketching out where things like beams and columns would need to go, and then only when I'm happy with this stage would I move on to any design software. I think that knowing how to use software is a really important skill. As long as you understand what you're doing and you can evaluate and interpret the results correctly, but only knowing how to use software will not set you up for your entire career. There's just way more to the role. Anyways, I hope that you learned something in this video and if you did enjoy it, you might like this video here where I take you through what a day in the life of a structural engineer really looks like. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.